Thank you, Mike. Also, I want to say thank you to all the men uh, that worked on the, the uh, I almost said transmission line. Uh, it's not, it's power line. I guess it would be a transmission line to a degree. Uh, to the clothes closet. Uh, my understanding is Bartley coming this week. It's hooked up and it's ready to roll. Amen. So, those buildings are ready uh, with electricity. And, uh, and I do believe with all my heart that's going to play a very, very important and big need in the year to come. Uh, because I believe uh, more than ever, people are going to be in need. Okay, I believe that. Some of you do, some of you don't. Some of you are not with me. Some of you are just trying to figure out how to get through it yourself. And we'll discuss all that uh, next week. That was my sermon for this week. Because everybody always wants to know when the year changes. What's the vision for the church? Well, the vision for the church don't change. It's been the same vision that Jesus Christ gave the church years before. And it never changes. The vision of the church can't change. The, the, the way we get to that vision may change. So our, our, our work may change a bit, but the vision doesn't change. We're here to, to, to bring lost souls to Christ. We're here to disciple and mentor those that come to Christ. And to help them go out and reach others for Christ. That's the mission of the church. It doesn't change. Yeah. Now, what people are used to hearing is they're used to somebody going and, and standing in a pulpit it's like, this is the vision of the church. Right. And it may well be the vision that was given for how the church is going to accomplish the same goals that Jesus Christ put in place many, many years ago. Yeah, right. But that's what the vision is. And it has nothing to do with changing because the church... The, the vision of the church shouldn't change much. The direction of the church shouldn't change much. But I believe with all my heart, people are going to have needs. Yes. I know it's going to happen. Anytime you cut people's businesses in half, they're going to have needs. Because guess what? They're spending. I just had this conversation with my son-in-law about children and about life in general. Because we were talking about, you know, if he pays off his student loans, he's going to get a raise. Well, yeah, you will, but somebody else will come along and help you spend that money. <laughs> you know, every time people get a raise, what usually happens? Their level of spending comes up to meet their, their new income level. Right. It pretty much works that way for most people. And so with that in mind, we were talking about it. And I told him, I said, well, that is true. But then you'll probably think about children. And I hope they think about them long before their student loans are paid off. Because <laughs> otherwise, they'll be really old having children. But, but nonetheless, we were just talking about it. And I do realize that there's going to be a lot of people in need. And you start to just look around. And you see people that their work has been affected. And you know that they're going to have need. And so I believe with all my heart the Lord is going to direct us in this next year to meet people's needs. And as we meet people's needs, we're going to, they're going to soften their heart. And as they soften their heart, we have an opportunity to minister to them. And so I believe that with all my heart. But that is not the sermon God gave today. If you have your Bibles, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Very simple. We're going to read 6 all the way down to 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. It says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. Be sober-minded and be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. In other words, you're not in this alone. 
And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him will be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I don't know about you, but it's awful hard to read that. So, and not be excited about your future in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to ask you to mark this in your Bible if it's not already. Go home, or if you don't have one at home and the ability to do it at home, stop by the office over there, turn your Bible upside down on that copy machine, and make you a copy of it. If you don't know how, I'll be in there for a little while. I'm happy to help you. Because I want you to cut that thing out of that copy and stick that on your mirror, on your dash, wherever the prevalent place is that you will see it on a daily basis to remind yourself you win. Amen. Amen. That you are a winner in Christ. I don't know. I, I, was, I was listening the other day and this song came on. I, I'm kind of a Don Williams fan. I got a winner in you. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> hey, where's all the Don Williams fans? <laughs> He was talking about some female, I'm sure. But I got to thinking about that. In Christ Jesus, I got a winner in you. Amen. No way I can lose. A love I can hold on to, I've got a winner in you. I thought, man, he could have wrote that and done a church song. He could have hit both charts. Well, obviously it wouldn't work because most of you don't even know it. It's all right. The point to it is, we need to start thinking like that. We need to start believing in Christ Jesus to do what he said he will do for us. First of all, you must humble yourself. That's the hard thing for us to do because guess what? Life's about us. I'm not sure that you're aware of this, but I'm going to ask you to look to your left, look to your right, look behind you, look in front of you. And realize there's other people in this game besides you. <laughs> this is the giant game of life, but there's plenty of others in it. Yes. You're not the only one. You're not in this solo. You're not here by yourself. And you've not been abandoned and you've not been left alone. Amen. Christ says, I'll never leave you alone. I won't turn my back on you. Now you may have friends that will turn their back on you. Heck, you may have family that will turn their back on you. But Christ said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm not turning my back on you. I'm with you. I'm here. As long as you're with me, I'm with you. Can't get that guarantee anyplace else. If you humble yourselves under his mighty hand in the proper time, he will do what? He will exalt you. In other words, I'll lift you up. When the time is right, if you stay humble and under my hand, when the time is right, I will lift you up. Amen. See, some of you wanted the time to be in 2020. Well, it wasn't your time. Some of you may have been banking on 2019. It wasn't your time. If I was you, I would humble myself under his mighty hand and pray for 2021. Amen. off curl up in a corner and lick our wounds from 2020. Nope. Nope. Well, no, no, wait a minute. That sounds good. Nope. I got this. Until you get counter punched or sucker punched upside the head and suddenly it's like, yeah, I think I'll just lay down and lick my wounds. I'm going to tell you right now, the devil's not through punching. 2021, he knocked us against the ropes and he beat us and he kicked us and it looked like a Rocky movie. Some of us are just barely standing. And I'm going to tell you, if he thinks he can whoop you, he's going to keep coming. Because that's his job. If we go a little further here, it reminds us of that. He's seeking who he may devour. Who, who can I take out? If you're a boxing fan, we rope a dope through 2020. Some of you don't have a clue. On that. <laughs> I'm not a Muhammad Ali fan, but you got through a lot of fights leaning on the ropes doing this. Call the ropes up. 
And some of us, that's what we did through 2020. We just laid on the ropes and took the punches and, and hoped we could live through them. And some of you today are sitting in this seat still hoping that you can take the punches and just live through them. Well, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to take the punches. Amen. The problem is, is Christians have been on the defense instead of the offense. The best, the best defense is a good offense. Amen. Go for it. Yeah. It says resist the devil and stand firm in your faith. Yes. The problem is we don't resist, we want to fight. I'm not going to fight with you, I don't have time for that. I don't know about you, I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. I fight enough. I have enough. I have enough between a job outside and the outside world, dealing with anything that comes your way, dealing with businesses, dealing with everybody that calls you on the telephone, <coughs> spam or no spam. I don't have time for the devil. So resist him. Yeah. Yeah. Turn away from him. Yeah. Don't entertain him. See how the best way to express that to you is. How many of you have some place you just hate to go? You know you have to go, but you just hate to go. It's like, oh, Lord. And every time you go, what do you do? You just try to get through it, don't you? <laughs> Let me just survive this. Yes. Let me just make it through to the other side. Absolutely. God rest her soul, when I had to go see my mom for something some days, I just knew. I prayed all the way home. Oh, Lord, give me strength. Lord, give me strength to be a good son. Lord, give me, Lord, just give me strength to be a good human. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love her to death, but she always started with everything I've done wrong in my life. And we worked and went up to whatever she needed. <laughs> and so you just knew when she called and said, son, you need, could you drop by tomorrow on your lunch hour? I would always say, I don't think I have enough time on my lunch hour. I'll come by after work. I want you to be able to spur me just right. And I don't think an hour will do it. You've all had that place? Yes. Yes? Yes? Well, you know, my mom's gone now. And if she was still around, it'd be kind of an honor to go over and get spurred every once in a while. Amen. But I would resist that as much as I could. I wouldn't find reasons not to go, but I would resist it as much as I could. But in the end, there was nobody that loved me more. Nobody cared for me more. Honestly. She's mom. That's the way it works. She could kick me just right and love me just right. She was mom. And you say, well, what's that got to do, man? Let me tell you why I say that. Because we all have those places we just languish when we have to go, when we have to be a part of it. Don't. Don't. Look at how you can be a testimony, a living, breathing testimony in that home. Amen. Craig brought something to my attention a few moments ago in my office. Oftentimes we look around us and we miss the blessings that God gives us in life. Amen. We miss the very minuscule, minute things. Yeah. Why did God do this? Why did he make this person this way and this person that way? Well, let me tell you something. Every one of us has a divine appointment. We have a mission that God has put us on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is to minister to someone, somebody, someplace in a divine appointment and to touch their life. Yes, right. And I pray I got a lot of divine appointments because I'm going to tell you, when your divine appointment's over with, you're over with. Right. Yeah. So I'm praying I got a lot. Right. Yeah. Or whomever that one is, don't come around for a while. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't want them to miss out on heaven, but take your time. If you're the only divine appointment I got. But we all have that in our lives. Every one of us. Quit looking at what the devil is doing to me or what life is doing to me or what hand is being dealt me. <clears throat> Some of us, we just look at what we got and we just worry about how we're going to play the hand dealt us. Pray about the hand you get. Right. Ask God to give you some wild cards in there. <laughs> pray for the things. After all, doesn't it tell us to pray? Yes. Cast your anxieties. I like this part. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Amen. What do you have to be anxious about? Oh, come on. You've all got something. Everybody's anxious about something. Most of us are anxious about where COVID's going. Well, here, let me help you out. Don't you think God already knew about COVID? Yes. Says he knows everything. Yes. Don't you think he already had this in his back pocket? Right. I know what's going on. Yeah. Hey, in case you're not down enough, let me help you out. They just found a brand new strain of COVID. It's 50% more contagious. Right. It would not surprise me if in about six months they find another one that's 75% more contagious. Amen. You know why? Because it brings about an anxiety in us and a fear in us. Right. Two things that Christ didn't give us on either account. Right. Now, I'm not telling you that COVID's not real. I know it's real. And I'm not making light of it. Because I can only imagine how it would affect somebody 20 years my senior. Because I know how it affected me. It's a short walk, about a 14 foot hallway from my bedroom to the living room recliner. And by the time I got there, all I wanted to do was walk back and go back to bed. I was gassed, I was done, I was shot. Spent the whole day getting down the hall. <laughs> not literally, but figuratively. My energy level was done. So I'm not making light of this by any means. Right. But don't you think God already knows what's going on? Yeah. And I love that he says, we don't have to suffer through this. No, it says he will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. I don't know how much more plain that can be. Right, right. Mm -hmm. He says, I got you. Right. Yeah. He sent in a message to all Christians. I got you. Amen. Yeah. If you will humble yourselves under my hand and let me have control of your life, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we struggle. Humbling ourselves under somebody else's hand and allowing them to have control of our lives. Right. Because after all, don't we all want to be in control? Of course we do. That's what it's all about. Nobody tells me what to do. Mm -hmm. They will. Well, I'll tell you what. Ain't nobody going to tell me I have to do this or I have to do that or I have to do this. The Bible tells us to submit to authority. That's right. Didn't ask you if you liked it. Said submit to authority. Well, I think it's about time we all become rebels. Okay. It's awful hard to be a rebel and then preach to somebody about Jesus. Amen. Don't do anything the Bible tells you to do, but I want you to know you gotta love Jesus. <laughs> Here, let me just throw this out for you. The world doesn't need any more religious people. I don't know about you, I've had my feel of religious people. Here, let's go one step further. Jesus had his feel of religious people. They crucified him. The world don't need that. They need somebody that has true answers 
And if you want to give them two answers, you're going to give them first Peter, or excuse me, first Peter 5, 6 through 11. You want to give them some answers? Give them some answers. Amen. Yeah. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, casting all your anxieties. Cast all your anxieties, all your fears, all those troubles. Cast them on the Lord. He said, I got this. Be sober-minded. That's getting tougher in this day and age. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. He's looking for somebody to devour. He's look. He's looking to take your life. Yeah. Don't give it to him. Yeah. Don't give him one foothold right. in your life. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of suffering. Do you do you understand that Christian brothers and sisters are suffering just like you are all over the world? Yeah. Yeah. All over the world, some worse than you are. So much worse. Some are being put to death just because they even mentioned the name Jesus. Right. So for as bad as we think we have it here in these good old United States, we're still in pretty good shape for the shape we're in. And we're going to suffer a little while. Even the scripture tells us here. I don't know what your Bible says, but mine says, and when you suffered a little while, now, to Jesus, I don't know what a little while is. That could be that could be two or three years. That's right. That could be a hundred years. I don't know. Could be a day. But he says, after you suffered a little while, so I know right now I'm going to go through some suffering. Yeah. I'm going to have some hardships. But I can't give in to them. I can't lay down. I can't roll over. I can't lick my wounds. I got to keep moving. I don't know about you, but how do you get through a battle? Keep walking. That's right. When you run out of gas, let me ask you a question. If you're on 195 and you're about four miles out of Florence and you run out of gas, how do you get gas? Now, that's a great idea right there. You call somebody. But about 25 years ago, there was no invention called the cell phone. And so you got your honey out of the car, and usually, unless you were an old farm truck or something, you did not have a gas can. Right. And you would hoof it all the way into d uh -huh. and you would beg them for a can, and usually you'd pay $10 or $15 deposit to hold that can that you could get back, right. if you had $10 or $15. Yep. And then you'd go out there and put 50 cents worth of gas in that can, because you just paid $15 to hold the can. <laughs> And you'd hoof it all the way back if somebody wasn't kind enough to give you a ride. And then you put that gas in your truck. And then pray that 50 cents got you there. Yeah. But you didn't sit in your truck and just go, well, I hope the gas gets here. Maybe somebody will come by with some gas. But I'm going to sit here till they do. No. You kept moving. You kept doing something. You kept moving through it. Right. Honestly, how do you expect to get through life if every time you hit a bump, you just sit down? Right. Some of us have made a living out of running from things. Right. We hit something hard, sit down. We don't like the way something's going, run from it. Don't bother to try to change it or to help it or to make it better. Run from it. That's the story of the church today. When it gets tough, quit. When it gets tough, go find a church that fits better for me. When it gets tough, go do this or go find this that I like better or go find where the programs are better. Don't sit and make the programs better where you are. It's just easier to go find one than it is to... Help one. Yeah. But let me tell you something. God says, I have assembled you for such a time as this. Yes. Right. We have a mandate here together. Yeah. We all fall. Brother Woody has a really nice jacket back there. has a really, really nice logo on it. Believe it or not, that logo represents this church. Wherever he goes with that jacket, people look at it and go, oh, that's no Cowboy Church. Right. 
That represents this church. That don't represent this building. This building is owned by the church. The church is us. And every one of us represent that logo. Because we are the church. And so when you're seen in public in the way you do things, in the way you react to things, in the way that you deal with people, speaks volumes about this church. It speaks volumes about you as a Christian, but ultimately about this church. So what do you want? And I know it's eight minutes till noon. <laughs> some of you are looking at lunch at noon, and some of you are looking that the Cowboys have a chance. <laughs> and they play at noon. That's all we need. Is to get in the playoffs and get beat and lose some spots in the draft. <laughs> We now have seven minutes. I'm closing with this. You get to decide how you handle 2021. Amen. You can't change how it's going to come at you. You can't change leadership in Washington. You can't change leadership in your town. There's a time that you can, but it's not now. So what's coming's coming. You get to choose how you handle it. You can handle it with grace, with righteousness, or you can handle it as a rebel. Your choice. You make it. I can tell you how I'm going to handle it, and I'm going to tell you how I suggest that you as part of the church handle it. And that is reading this scripture every day and walking in it. That's the only way you're going to be able to handle it. Because at some point it's going to get the best of you if you don't remember that scripture. You know what part of it I have to remember most? Two parts. Humble yourself and resist. See, resist doesn't mean getting in a fist fight with the devil or arguing with him. Resist means just tell him, get the heck out, I'm done. Amen. That's resist. See, some of us think resist is, okay, we're going we're gonna to go to battle. Come on, devil. I got something for you. Okay, you're not the crappy kid. Put it away. Because I'm going to tell you, he's going to whoop your tail. Well, here's what I am going to give you. I'll even deal with it. I'm going to tell you. <coughs> You ain't at my level, I don't have time for you. Move on. I got bigger and better things. As my daddy said, I got bigger fish to fry than you. Move on. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. See, some of us can't live there now. Right. Just don't work for us. Hey, look. 2021 is here. Mm -hmm. yes. Hey, and just so you know, there's a vaccine for COVID. There's a new strain of COVID. There's all kinds of new things happening. Right. You can get happy. You can be sad. You can be upset. You can be mad. You can be anything you want to be. Or you can realize God's got this. I'm just going to keep, I'm gonna keep moving. Amen. You can make this your best, the finest hour. If you've never seen the movie, you should watch it. It's a, it's a Disney movie. It's a true life story. About some Coast Guard, some women in 1952, who literally took a little bitty boat out in, in basically hurricane blizzard type gale force winds and actually saved 32 men on an oil tanker that had split in half. Amen. And the hardest part was getting across the bar. That's right. Most people had died trying. 
And this young man's whole basis was built around the Coast Guard's asked to go out and never asked to come back. That's right. So I got a mission. And when they got there, the guy told them, said, we can't, we might be able to get 22 on this boat at best, but we can't get 32 plus us. That's 36 people on this boat. We'll never get back. He said, we all live or we all die. Amen. But we're taking them all. He had to make decisions. And God asked you to make decisions. He asked you to submit yourself yeah, yeah. unto him. Amen. To stand in your faith. Stand in what you believe. Because this is the day. And I promise you, 2021 can be your finest hour. Yeah. Yeah. But that's up to you. Church, bow your heads with me. Some of you in the sound of my voice may say, Pastor, I'd love to be able to trust in Jesus like that, but man, I, I struggle. I struggle with him as my Savior. I'm not even sure he's my Savior anymore. There's just been so much in my life. Maybe like myself, you were once saved and walked in the Lord, and, but there are some things that's come up in your life that's just taken you away you've allowed things to happen in your life that's removed you from him. If that's you with us this morning, I'm going to ask you to just lift your hand up. I'm going to pray with you. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm not going to ask you to do something special. There's no saving power on these steps up here. The saving power is in Jesus Christ, and he already did that work at Calvary. You just have to believe in him. Anybody, Pastor, I need Jesus. I need to know that he is the Lord and Savior of my life. If you're here this morning, just lift your hand up. I want to pray with you. Thank you for that hand, man. Anyone else? Man, I want to pray with you this morning. I want the church to come alongside us and pray. I want to pray that you find your place with Jesus this morning. As the church to continue with their heads bowed as we pray with the church. Church, if you would join in with me, man, if you would join in now, let us pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm a sinner. I'm and I'm sorry for my sin. I need a Savior. And you're the only one that can save me. I believe in that with all my heart. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose again that I might have eternal life. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. And by faith, I accept you as my Savior. And I accept the cleansing of your blood. In Jesus' name, church about just remain with your heads bowed. Father, I pray for each and every person that's sitting here under the sound of my voice this morning. I pray, Lord, that you will give them the courage to humble themselves. The hardest thing we may ever do is humble ourselves before you. The hardest thing we'll ever do as humans is to humble ourselves in general. So, Lord, I ask you this morning to give each man, each woman, each young person here courage and strength to humble themselves before you. To turn their eyes fully, completely and wholly upon you. Depending on you to guide them and direct them. Leading them through this maze, this, this turmoil that we call life. Father, I know if we keep our eyes firmly focused on you, not looking to the right and the left, but focusing upon you, you will guide our paths. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. I believe you've ordered our steps. Father, give us the faith, the strength, and the courage to walk in. Resisting the devil as he comes against us. Not fighting with him, not arguing with him, resisting him. Turning away from him. And moving on our paths that you have set before us. 
Father, I pray today for each person in this church that this will be the best year of their life. Not because it's the best year, but because in you it will be the best year in our lives. Father, I pray it will be the best year. I believe it will be the finest hour for the Maxdale Cowboy Church. I believe we will flourish if we do the things you've called us to do. I believe people will come here looking for what we have, for what we've experienced right here at First Peter today. Lord, there will be people seeking that. And if they see it in us, they're going to want to come where we are and find it. Lord, I ask you to make each one of us a living, breathing testimony to those around us. Let our joy be contagious. Let our smile be eye people. Let it bring questions to people's minds into their hearts. Lead them here, Lord, and we may lead them to you. And we give you praise and glory this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. I pray this is your finest hour. Totally up to you. Where do you want? What do you do? Where do you go? I don't know about you, but I, I've got a mandate. I've got a ministry here to grow. Many of you have ministries here to grow. Some of you have personal ministries to grow. I'm excited because I believe all of us together with God's leading is in our finest hour. This might be the hottest church I've ever preached in today. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I am smoking hot. I know this much. About four years ago, I couldn't have said that. <laughs> I don't know how to be preaching in a barn jacket. <laughs> Just standing up here with my hands in my pocket preaching. Because there was no place to get warm. And in the summer, there was no place to get cool. <laughs> I was still preaching a long sleeve shirt, thinking, oh, Lord, don't wear a t-shirt, it's a habit. And so, but we have been so blessed. Amen. When you look at our blessing, you know that God doesn't leave you or forsake you. He just continues to bless you and follow him. That's right. Church, stand with me today as we prepare to dismiss. <laughs> as always, it's a blessing to be back home and be with you in church. Love you. Amen. This morning, it's, it's always great. Brother Wayne, would you close us in prayer this morning? Hallelujah. Lord, it's our pleasure. Be in your house this morning yes. to take and come and glorify and praise your name. Jesus, we take this word that you have blessed us with us today and, and we pray your name, oh God, for bring Joe to your seat and Sister Sharon, oh God, to take and make it well again to be the head and shepherd of this congregation. God, guide and direct us this year. Keep your hands upon us. Show us what we need to be. Keep us today, Lord. Bless us in our going out and our coming in. We give you the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.